Hey y'all, welcome back to the Smoke Dungeon. DB here, and today I got a, something a little special for you. And that's something special is from the days, the heady days when Games Workshop would actually produce a book that includes no Games Workshop models. Crazy! That's right, it's Warhammer Historical Gladiator, y'all. No Russell Crowe in this show. This is the game of deadly arena combat in ancient Rome. This was put out in 2011. 11. And DB copped this uh, shortly thereafter. I think it was like 2012-ish, maybe. I don't know. This is one that has sat on the shelf for a while. And then I always take it down, go back to it. And then it goes back on the shelf for a little bit. Um, so, yeah. I mean, do you guys, you know, you ever been in a Turkish prison? You ever seen a grown man naked? Do you like gladiator movies? You know, that kind of thing. So DB was like, let's do it. You know, let's take it down. And then I'm going to show you this book. And then I'm going to show you some other really cool things. So let's check it out, dude. This book is wonderful. Uh, back in the day, I don't exactly know how much I paid for this. It was probably like 60, 70 bucks, maybe 10 years ago. Um, yeah, and Warhammer historicals are wild to me, dude. They were so good. So good. I mean, some of the rule sets and stuff were kind of crazy, but just the production in this book and everything that was put into this book, it is like one of the dopest things I don't know, maybe it's because DB is like, I'm crazy for ancient history. Uh, you know, many, 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 many moons ago, my minor was classical mythologies and I, uh, my major was ancient histories, particularly Rome, Greece, you know, the classics. So yeah, I guess maybe, maybe this just hits my wheelhouse. I don't know. But it's so, you take a look at this, and then you look at the shit GW produces these days, man. Or, I'm sorry, the stuff they produce these days in terms of, like, rule books and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, let's check it out, dude. Typical miniatures game, right? But you're going to notice something. None of these are Games Workshop miniatures. Uh, most of them are all foundry I believe is what is predominantly in this book. Foundry miniatures, which are awesome, dude. They have that like old hammer vibe going on. Um, yeah, love them. Love them. Love some gladiator games. And there are plenty of other gladiator games. I want to say that first and foremost. I'm not telling you to like run out on eBay and try and buy this thing and find it. I just want to share it with you. Um, it is pretty awesome. I will say that much. But, uh, you know, Arena Rex is also awesome. What's, is there, uh, there's another one that's really good now. Of course, it escapes me. It'll probably come to me as soon as I uh, hit stop on this video. So, yeah. Check it out. We love these books. You know why? Back in the day, the most important rule. The most important thing about playing a game is having fun. You know what I'm saying? Having fun. Not like crushing your opponents and hearing the lamentations of the women. You know what I'm saying? And being like just a general goof ass. Uh, this cool thing is another cool thing. This is uh, the characteristics. It's very old schooly Warhammer, like strength, um, toughness, things like that. But they use uh, Latin words for it, it's weird for some of these things. <laughs> so uh, there's like fortitude or like my pronunciation is shit, by the way, everyone. So lay off me. Or just put in the comments how you're like the best linguist ever and how we should all love you and worship at your feet like the emperor. Uh, so yeah, we have attacks, wounds, but then we also have uh, disciplina, you know, Constantina, or however you want to pronounce that, which is a little weird to me that you're going to go back and forth. Um, but, you know, not the worst. Now this thing is dope. Page 10. Right? We're at page 10. We haven't even, like, gone into rules, basic rules, or anything. Just the introduction that's like, hey, you need dice and a tape measure and a game thing. Like, naming your gladiators. Boom. Narrative. Initiate the narrative. 
You know what I'm saying? It would be like, name your space marine captain or something. But they don't even put that in there. Instead, it's all like, hey, you want to be Captain Shrike or Captain Lysander. And the wild thing is, they give you names for typical Roman names, names for the various types of gladiator. They give you Latinized Celtic names. They give you names taken from various regions and towns. Just the history that is available, Judean names, Egyptian names, female names. Oh, female names already. Jesus. Wow, we didn't have to make a big deal about that. They give you names for, well, this part, names for a dwarf. Uh, I guess they're called, uh, this one's dope though, Felix the Dwarf. Pretty cool. But uh, yeah, I guess we're not supposed to say that word either. But I don't know. Little people. And then they give you traditional pairings of gladiators that are supposed to fight, right? And then we go into our instructions. The game turn. Game's got six turns. Priority phase, movement phase, shooting phase, fight phase. After the fight is over. And then the end of the turn, right? And then we have the movement phase. You have like one, two, three, four. You're looking at five pages for the movement phase, right? It's typical, like, because this game is more of a skirmish game with less models, there are some certain things that require more rules, right? Like the actual fighting isn't uh, too complicated. But then you have like, here's a jump table. In case you want to jump over a guy laying there or an obstacle. What happens if you stumble, right? Models on the ground. If you're kneeling down. Nets. Entanglement charts. Uh-oh. Examples of obstacles. Dead elephant. So cool. So cool. You know what I'm saying? And then, again, we have we just have painted, painted examples, right? The layout is very Forge worldy kind of new Old World book style. Um... So, but this was way before then, right? Here we go, shooting phase. Thrown rider. You can knock somebody off a horse, right? Shooting phase is like three, three pages. And every page has beautiful color photos. Like this book, we got color examples about the fight phase. I mean, just very well done. Very well done. Regardless of what you think about the actual rule set of this game, uh, because at time, the basic rules, I feel, are a little too simple. Um, but then we have this. We have the advanced rules. We can hit location charts, right? High stab, low slash. Uh, you know, when these are, you, you got to make a test to charge a wild animal. You know what I'm saying? There's a tiger or a lion in the, in the arena, you know? You're not just going to run up and stab that thing if you've never seen a lion before, right? Like crazy. Come on, man. Wicked. Then we got experience levels. Because if you're going to make gladiators, right? Like, you want a campaign. We want a campaign, right? We want our gladiator. We want to be Russell Crowe. We want to start in the, the little rinky-dink North African arena. And then we want to get all the way up to the Coliseum. You know what I'm saying? The Primus Paulus. That's, that's who they call the champions in here. You got a Tyro, a Spectati, and then a Veterati, and then a Primus Paulus, right? And then we got some heroes. So once you become a Primus Paulus, you get some skills, heroic actions, you know? Look at this, dude. So cool. So cool. Uh-oh. Guy in a Minotaur suit, but... <laughs> I love some of the old GWR. Like, it's just like, there are very few pictures in here, and then all of a sudden, eh, let's put a guy in, uh, let's kind of put a guy's butt crack here, just like the Minotaur. You know, he's a Celtic hero. Um, yeah. And then check it. We got, we go old school. I'm taking it back. Like, this is reminding me of, like, 2003 White Dwarfs, 1998 White Dwarfs, you know? We got all these models, right? And these are all, again, these are all foundry. Um, and I don't believe these are the foundry line... Citadel sculpts? Because Foundry did have some Citadel sculpts. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure on that. Somebody can correct me. You know, they can blow me up. Send me hate ma emails or something. I don't know. Check it out. We're back into the history, yo. Because we're going types of gladiator. Right? We're going types of gladiator. We got your Simnite, Thracian, your Gallus, your Eclis. We got them all, dude. We got them all. 
Secutor, Mirmilo, Provocator, Hoplomachus. You know what I'm saying? We got them all. And they all vary. Some of the stats are very similar, right? Because it's like they're pretty much just generally the same kind of guy. But but the weapons do have different abilities. The type you are of gladiator, be you light or heavy, has an effect on things. Um, you know, and you get a nice little blurb about the history and what they would look like. It's pretty cool. I've got a little quote from Suetonius down here, you know. Then we have less common gladiators. Um, these are like, you know, this dude with the lasso or a noose. He's pretty crazy. This chick with her boobs hanging out, you know. We got them all. Guy with a bow. Uh, a little person. Guy on a horse again. A Venatores is a guy with a sword and a net. Ba, 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 ba. Although I really thought Aventores was didn't have a net, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, whatever. We're not going to get into history on that. Uh, we got these guys. We got all these kind of dudes. This is very rare, or unusual. Oh, you want to just put like some regular dudes in there to fight gladiators? Like you're going to redo uh, fucking what do you call them? Gladiator of the movie, we got some legionaries. We'll give you some stats for them, just some legionaries. And then we got some characters. Uh, most of these are mythological dudes. We have Perseus, Heracles, uh, the Minotaur. Um, these are all characters that were played in the arena. So we have those, right? Then, of course, we have Commodus. We have him in here, because, of course, we have to have that, right? He's in his weird gladiator stuff. This probably came out, I don't know, what time did the, when did the movie Gladiator come out? I feel like there are some Gladiator vibes in this. Um, like it harkens directly to the movie, but whatever. Then we have what all the various weapons do. There's obviously the Gladius, right? But then there's, there's Tridents, there's Nets, Pugio, Sika, I'm pronouncing all these wrong, I'm sure, the Pelum. Regular spears, I mean, less common weapons. We get into crazy stuff like the Cestus, Celtic swords, a hook, a spatha. Just all kinds of cool stuff, dude. All kinds of cool stuff. Paper quality in this book is super awesome, too. I've read it bunches of times, and it still holds up well. Even in my greasy mitts, you know what I'm saying? Check it out. Now, we're going to get into scenarios. Scenario one, the boxing match. Literally, to do this scenario, you have two guys, set them up in this tiny square, and you just fight. You just fight. Basic, right? But super cool. You, you'd you be surprised, like, if you and your buddies all, like, painted up one boxer, ancient uh, Roman boxer dude, and then you had, like, a Swiss-style tournament of boxing fights, you would have a blast. Trust me. You know what I mean? It's much, much more fun for the average bear than uh, rolling 400 six-siders and looking at data sheets. But that is just my opinion. And I am one man here in the smoke dungeon. Oh, we want our gladiators to fight in some aristocrats, uh, you know, living room. Boom, we got a scenario for that, right? We just got one where there's a bridge. And we just got a three, three, uh, you know, triangle battle. Love triangle of doom, right? Then we got one where you, uh, there was a dude who fought with a helmet with no eye holes, I believe. And that is what this one's about. You kind of blunder around, crazy. This one is more of a regular skirmish. We got like five on fives. That one is actually one I like. Um, we got dudes fighting a bear. <laughs> Which is going to bring me to another uh, thing we're going to look at in a minute here in this book. That you're going to be like, that. If you don't think it's dope, then just like, don't ever watch my videos. All right? Not that anybody does anyway. Um, here we have an attack on a Celtic village. You know what I mean? This is a mass combat that they could stage in the arena. Or I guess you could, technically you could probably play this as like a regular skirmish. I, I would think, you know. We got a fake siege. We got rules for mounted stuff. Dude, it's, you know what I mean. This We got chariots, y'all. Y'all want chariots? We got them. 
We got them chariots. They got a crash table, dismount table. Elephants, elefante. Dude, my kid used to have a stuffed elephant. Um, and I called it Harry Elefante. Like he was Harry Belafonte. Just for y'all. That's that's a side note. Um, that may or may not be all of my YouTube passwords. Think about that. Elephants. We got dead elephants. We got two pages on elephants. Super cool. Then we got some different, because elephants are different, right? We got Indian elephants, African elephants. We got the rector. We got the, the boxers. Uh-oh. Now here's where we're getting into more crazy stuff. You know they fought animals, right? We got a whole section on wild animals. How they move and attack, right? We got three different kind of dogs, y'all. We got wolves, jackals, hyenas, bears, boars. I mean, look at this. And Foundry makes all models for all this stuff that they used to. I'm pretty sure they do. Um, we got bulls. Because the arena wasn't always about gladiators, right? Sometimes it was just dudes killing wild animals for, like, no purpose. Like, even animals that couldn't even really fight, you know? Or it was, like, dudes jumping over bulls and crazy stuff like that. Um, but everyone always just goes straight to, like, oh, yeah, a gladiator fought a gladiator to the death. Yeah, that didn't really happen that much. So, we got lions. We even got a Barbary lion in there, right? We got tigers. We got leopards. We got a trained leopard, trained lion. Tells you how much they cost, by the way. Like value. Dude, we got more elephants. We got ostriches. That's right. Somebody was like shooting the heads off of ostriches with like a crazy bow. I forget his name, but that's like a famous story. We got crocodiles, hippopotamus, rhinos. Dude, so cool. So cool. We got a, more rhinos. We got a crazy gorilla. Um, you know, here we got a Venator and, and just some animals. And this is crazy. They just throw a random 54 millimeter scale tiger in here, which all of these models are 28 mil. But when I look at that, I, I'm like, dude, there's no reason you couldn't play this game with 54 mil dudes or like, I don't know, a smaller scale than 28, maybe 12s, whatever is like easily accessible for you, I would think. And then, dude, we got a whole section, just history of gladiatorial combat in the Roman Empire, right? Just nuts. Then we got campaigns, how to run the campaign, like how much money you start with to build your gladiator school, right? You, you want to go, we got advanced rules for actually buying slaves and raising them up to gladiators. Crazy, dude. Crazy. Oh, you want them sea battles? You want them sea battles? Yeah, we got those too. You know what I'm saying? Fill the arena, fill the lakes. We got 10 pages of sea battles. We can just chariot race. So you see, it isn't all about just straight one-on-one -on -one fighting in here. And then we have old school paint your gladiator section taking you through, right? Look at this. Look at this. Look at this terrain. Boom, 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 boom. All scratch built. Or, you know, more guys. We got more guys. These are alternate scales. See, this is where it talks about most of the miniatures in the book are 28. Then it's like, boom, check these out, which are super dope, dude. I don't know. My shaky hand and bad eyes can't do. I've decided the, the larger the model, like the worse my um, painting is. At least that's how I feel about myself, y'all. And that's what's most important. You know, because I don't really care what other people think. We've got a glossary of terms. A very large glossary of terms, right? And then we have our old reference sheets, which are very GW-ness. Then we're going to acknowledge people in the back, the miniatures, um, you know, and then what books this is drawn from. So this, this original game system was Rick Priestley, dude. And this rule book was written by Barry Hill. Uh, cover art is Dave Gallagher, dude. You know him. So, yeah. I mean, it's just... This book is awesome. This book is awesome. Okay? But, moving along from this book... I'm going to show you something. Because DB is not all about books and games and stuff, right? Uh-oh. That's right. DB got some miniatures here, y'all. 
I got some miniatures. And what I got here to show y'all is I have um, some stuff I painted a while ago for my Gladiator crew. And then I have some stuff I recently primed and started basing some stuff. So you could see how the process works, y'all. Um, and let's see. We'll start over here. So these are original Foundry miniatures. Uh, these I pulled down out of the attic a couple months ago. You see, I still got to clean up these dudes. There's, uh, you know, some flash. They're all metal. Even their shields are metal. But I glued them on GW bases, and then I used this sand mixture I have. I, I feel like that comes out really good um, for a lot of different models. So that's the very first step. Then all these dudes have been primed uh, black. So, yeah, just straight black. The base and everything, dude. And then, I think that's a chaos, maybe a chaos black. Or that might even be some sad ass army painter black. I don't know. Then I just start picking out metals. Picking out metals, right? You know, it's hard to see, dude. The lighting in the dungeon is shit, but I don't care. I'm not even apologizing, y'all. Um, so, all these dudes right here are going to form a second group of gladiators. And they will be accented in blue colors. And you will see what I mean in like 10 seconds when I start showing you these dudes. So these are the guys that I finished before. Um, and these are all, again, all foundry models. And these dudes are all accented with like a burgundy red here. And I tried to keep these dudes pretty, pretty plain for the most part. But they're very clean. Like, that's the look I was going for. It was very clean and crisp and just kind of, you know, wanted it to be, look nice, but not, um, you know, I didn't want a lot of, like, weathering or anything like that. So there's some shading. Not a whole lot on some of them, to be honest with you, on the skin. They could probably all use another wash on the skin. This dude's missing a shield, I just realized, so I never put his shield on. As you can see by that strap right there. So, gonna have to dig another shield out. So, but you'll see, I mean, I painted like pretty much all the classics, y'all. Like, just, you know, I didn't spend much time on these dudes at all, to be honest with you. This is probably like uh, maybe two weeks of painting time for me. And these dudes were painted when did I, I revealed this to my buddies. I called it my super secret Alex Jones level project, y'all. I was like, info wars. I'm making this crazy project. Cause nobody else was like playing this. So I was like, yo, I'm, uh, this is the stuff I'm on. And so that's what I went with. And uh, I think it was like right before the Rona. I don't know. Is when I started like re getting, getting it back off the shelf. When I first got it like 10 years ago, I went hard on it, and then uh, I was like, yo, I got to paint more stuff. Never got around to it, and then maybe, I don't know, when was it? Like four or five years ago, I painted these dudes. This dude is supposed to be a slave. This is my, uh, he's uh, like, I call him the senator in my war band. He's like the, the shittiest dude. He's like a disgraced senator that's been enslaved, and he fights in the arena now. And he's rubbish, dude. He always dies. So, but I, I did him to like mix him up a little bit as opposed to like all the other dudes that were gladiators. And you can see he still has like the red, his only red thing is, uh, even though he's part of the red crew, is this little rope here. Um, yeah. So, you know, nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. basic clean 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 this dude i believe is usually was he my champion oh it's him and this other dude yeah he's one of the two champions for my crew Let's see he's got a medusa on his shield there a little phallishan looking action there but just you know pretty basic but good. Like, on the tabletop, these guys look great. And all you really need for an arena is a brown mat. You know what I'm saying? So. 
one one thing I will say is these like older dudes, these are these models are old, right? But I dig that style. Some of the guys that hold spears and tridents and stuff are kind of wonky, like their hand isn't really actually open, but you know, still cool, still dope. So you see what I mean? These dudes are going to get painted with blue um, loincloths and maybe some blue feathers and things of like that. This dude is usually my leader right here. He's my champion. Double swords. Old double daggers. Double Ds. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And then, of course, because, you know, no, um, no, uh, gladiator fight. Painted up some animals, yo. This lion. He's pretty dope, I think. Again, nothing crazy. A little blend on this dude, though. I did, like, blend in around here. Trying to give him... You know. The problem is, my kids see this dude in the, uh, in the cabinet. And they just want to play with him. And this guy. My big bear. My big bear. This bear, I don't know. Now that I look at it, this bear is on a small-ass base. I didn't realize I did that. So, yeah. The bear, his mouth was kind of jank. He probably needs a wash in them teeth now that I'm looking at it. But again, from far away, like over here, he's, you know, you're just like, oh, the bear's dope, right? He's like, I'm going to eat you. Arr. I mean, you got to love that, right? Yeah. So, yeah. This is Gladiator, Warhammer Historicals. When Games Workshop used to make, like, random cool stuff. Like, you could learn a little bit of history, and it would encourage you to buy other people's models. Now, I know, like, you know, Foundry is XGW. A lot of those guys are XGW, so it's probably a, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. I, I don't really know, man. But, like, I don't, it, it, it was more hobby, you know? It's more hobby than, than game, almost. And I feel like, as far as miniatures, that, that might be where I'm at. Because, like, I like... I love games, dude. Love games in all their shapes and sizes, man. I sit in a, down here in the dungeon, and I sit in piles of them, you know? And I sit in piles of miniatures, just like these. But, uh... Yeah. I mean, there's something about this that is just pure and... Reminds me, brings you back to all the good things that Warhammer and Games Workshop was, like, capable of, dude. And it makes me a little sad that you're almost never going to see anything. But you, you will never see anything like this again unless they make their own game, right? And their own range of models, I guess. If they started pumping out historical models, then boom, you'd see stuff like this. But you won't. And the Great War, they have a Great War book. I have that over there. I have uh, American Wild West. I bought them all back in the day. I mean, you know, I'm a completionist junkie, dudes. But yeah, remember, when you're in the arena and you're going at it, watch out for the lion, tigers, and bears because they're going to get you. And you don't always have to kill people, right? In the arena, we don't always have to kill people. You could actually be good to one another. And do what you feel.